Let's talk about private money for a moment. You got experience in raising a lot of private money. Um, what kind of advice, and, and you can speak from experience. You were a new real estate investor that had never raised private money. And here you are out, you know, attracting private money. What kind of advice can you give to our listeners here as to how, what's the best way for them to start uh, attracting private money and they are, they're new. Love that. Great question. And I think there's, there's multiple things. I think, first of all, everybody is always their own bottleneck. I think we are always holding ourselves back, telling ourselves these stories that probably aren't true. And, um, you know, just like, just like in 2008, 2009, we thought there was no money out there until you knew how to unlock it. And then when you knew how to unlock it, the vaults are open, right? And that's kind of the same today where you think there's no deals out there. Well, if you know how to source off market deals, then there's absolutely deals. Like we have no problem finding deals, even in this market and how hot it is. So uh, number one, get out of your own way, get out of your own head. There's always deals, there's always money. Number two is those are the two activities you need to be focused on, regardless of what's going on in your business. You might be deal heavy, but not money heavy. Other times you might be money heavy, but not deal heavy, right? And and you need to always be sourcing those both of those things at the same time. Because I remember when I first started flipping houses, I would spend money on advertising and marketing and direct mail pieces, and I get all this deal flow coming in. And then all of a sudden I'd have too many deals. I'd say, you know, turn off the pipeline. Like, let's just get these deals to the finish line, get them done. And then all of a sudden I'd get those, you know, renovated and turned over and under contract and say, hey, what's what, what do we got in the pipeline? And then we wouldn't have anything. It's because I, I went through these feast and famine cycles of finding deals or, or marketing and then turning off marketing and then turning on marketing and turning. You have to always be marketing all the time for deals. And you also need to always be marketing all the time for money. And, um, and so I'm always just talking to people about, Hey, what do you do? What do you invest in? You know, where do you put your money when you have some extra cash? Do you own any real estate? No, I don't. But I always wanted to, I was at a birthday party for a six year old this weekend and, uh, somebody, you know, I'm sitting down, I'm eating some cake or whatever. Somebody sits down. What do you do? You're in real estate. Oh yeah. I'm in real estate. I, I invest in uh, apartment buildings. Oh man. I've always wanted to invest in, uh, uh, buy a rental property. I just, I don't know where to find the money. I don't know to do this or like do that. Or I, I just see it as risky or blah, blah, blah. It's like trying to save up the cash. I was like, well, man, why don't you just raise private money? And it just, you go down these conversations of, well, do you know anybody with a 401k or an IRA or an entrepreneur or an A player? So like, there's so many people with access, either their own capital or access to capital out there. All you need to do is help them uncover that. And I can assure you that even though the market's been going crazy, everybody knows inflation's coming. Any, everybody financially aware knows that inflation will be coming. And if you just educate, it's not a sales process. It's not a pitching process. It's not a lend me money. Because whenever somebody asks me to lend them money, I feel like I'm never going to get it back. Right. But if they want a joint venture, they want to partner up. You want to, hey, you want to come in on this deal with me. That's, that's a little bit different of a language that seems a little bit more exciting for people to want to get involved in that. And, um, and I'm always talking to them. Hey, I got some deals in the pipeline. Uh, I got some deals coming down the next 30 to 90 days. And uh, have you ever thought about passively partnering up on, uh, on the financial side of a real estate deal? And I kind of asked them to borrow private money without actually telling them I want them to lend me money. You know, I told them they're passive. I told them the financial side, right? So they know they're bringing money. They know they're not expected to do anything. Do they want to partner up, meaning, you know, get involved somehow. And so I say things like that in order to just kind of plant the seeds. And a lot of the investment side of raising money happens to deal with timing, right? They might actually be interested and they might want to invest in your deals, but their money's tied up in another deal. Their money's tied up in you know, a, a project or they just sent their kid off to school or just paid the college tuition or something along those lines where all of a sudden... They're selling their business. They're launching a new product. They're selling some other asset. They're going to have an influx of money. It could be today, or it might be six months from now. The key is just staying involved, staying relevant in those conversations and letting them know that you're always working on opportunities. And um, I, I think we have a responsibility knowing where the stock market is and how inflated it is and, um, and knowing that we can take people's capital and back it by, by a piece of property, something tangible and reliable that increases in value as inflation increases, uh, rents increase as the same as inflation. And, and just by educating people 
we're able to help them place their capital into a safer, more stable investment. And I, I have a sense of responsibility to have that conversation with everybody, right? And um, you know, if somebody loses their butt in uh, the stock market the same way that a lot of people did back in the day, um, and I could have helped them, I could have helped them not lose, right? 20, 30, 40% of their portfolio value by helping them extract at the top of the market right now and then bringing it into uh, something that's stable, that's um, predictable, that can go, that, that, that can ride out this, this inflationary period that we're probably going to be going into. I think uh, we have a responsibility. You know, I think we need to be doing that for folks. So it doesn't sound like you're chasing, begging, selling, trying to talk anybody into anything. And in fact, um, uh, you do it the same way I do. And that is, uh, I don't even, I don't even now with, with you being in apartments, it would be different, but like on single family houses, I don't even pitch a deal. Right. I, I have the people come into the program. They've got the money pledged, ready to go. And they're just waiting for the phone call with the good news. Mm -hmm. I don't even ask them if they want to fund the deal. Of course they want to fund the deal. They've been, they've been waiting for the phone call. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love what you also said, Tim, you said you're teaching people about what this stuff is. And I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, we've actually got an obligation. Uh, we need a servant's heart to let people know about, you know, the programs we have.